How complicated would it be to build a servo decoder using the modular approach I introduced in video number 16? I wanted to know and here I show step by step how I combined a few modules to a decoder and how I added about 100 lines of Arduino code to build a 16 channel servo decoder that meets these requirements. And if you want to build and play for yourself you find the Arduino code on my GitHub page linked in the description section below. Hello YouTubers and welcome to the Internet of Toy Trains. I am Hans Tanner and here is a new episode of IOTT with fresh ideas about how to use the Internet of Things along with sensors and microcontrollers to control a model railroad layout. So, get on board! The train is leaving the station! A modular approach greatly speeds up the development of any product. However, developing a decoder from scratch still takes longer than my standard 10 to 15 minutes video length. So, I split this topic in two parts and here's the table of contents of the first video, so that you can skip ahead to the areas you are most interested in. Before we go on with the hardware, just a word of warning in case you would like to build this decoder yourself. I killed several components in the process and you don't want to make the same mistakes. Number 1. Always buy plenty of components and that for two reasons. First, it is always possible that you kill one of them, so it's good to have a spare available. Second, if something does not work as you imagined and you think it might be a faulty component, it is good to always have another one at hand to verify. Of course, that does not mean that you should just replace it and then destroy another component as well. If you saw some smoke coming out somewhere, you should first think and then act. Number 2. Always disconnect DCC when working on the wiring and always check for shorts before reconnecting. I killed one of my nanos by touching some pins with a powered DCC wire. Number 3. Always check the pin numbers. Do not connect an Arduino output pin to a line that is driven to ground. The pins can only supply about 40 milliamps. I killed just another nano by connecting an activated output pin to the DCC input signal. Number 4. Place a capacitor next to the Arduino. I did not have that originally and the Arduino got a negative spike when the servos initialized. It browned out and left the PWM module uncontrolled. Therefore, all servos stayed activated and drew more current than the DCC interface module could supply and smoke was coming out of the rectifier. Number 5. In general, it is a good thing to closely watch all components the first seconds after powering up. All LEDs should stay on and nothing should get hot. It is a good idea to check the temperature of the rectifier and the buck converter IC as well as the PWM board IC. Also, the connected servos should be quiet after quick movement during initialization. And needless to say, all you do following this tutorial, you do at your own risk. Just saying. And with that, let's start building the hardware. The first component to place is the DCC interface introduced in video 16. What it does, it receives the DCC signal on the input side, converts it through the rectifier into DC and outputs DCC and ground, and it separates the information from the DCC signal and feeds it to um, the, the signal output here. And it has also an input that we are not going to use uh, for this decoder here, but uh, that can be used to send an acknowledge pulse um, to the programming track. The second module is the buck converter, which takes an input voltage of up to 40 volts and um, converts it into an adjustable uh, voltage between 1.5 and 30 volts uh, on the output side. I normally always use uh, buck converters, uh, particularly when I need to drive motors, uh, because buck converters are much more efficient 
uh, than linear uh, voltage regulators. That would be sufficient for just powering the processor, but for powering servos, I prefer something that um, has a little bit higher efficiency. The next module is the uh, Arduino Nano. The Nano is really um, a scaled down version of the Arduino Uno. It has the same processor, but the board size is much um, uh, smaller. So for our purposes of making this decoder, that's kind of like perfect because it fits this um, uh, breadboard, no problem. Just takes like one field like everything else. Um, so that's it. The last component that goes on the board is this PCA 9685 16-channel PWM driver. It um, essentially takes um, uh, communication from the microcontroller and uh, drives 16 uh, PWM outputs, so pulse width modulated outputs that uh, can be used to drive the servos. So the servos can really connect it uh, just to those 16 um, uh, connectors here. Um, while the connection to the uh, microcontroller happens on this side here, uh, it's an I square uh, C uh, uh, bus which connects to SCL and SDA, and then we can um, give it the ground signal. Uh, VCC, VCC is for the processor and V plus is the voltage for the servos. Uh, in our case we are going to combine those together. We give it 5 volts on both as the servos are also working on 5 volts. So I place this as my last module on the board. And that's how the hardware looks like. The next step is to attach the um, servos. I have prepared a little board here. Uh, with just like 8 servos I could connect 16 um, but I don't have 16 at this time so I'm going to connect what I have and that is 8 um, so what I do I'm just going to connect um, servos on every other um, output of the of the servo driver um, on the first group I'm going to use um, the first output then um, the third so I leave one empty in between then the next servo goes like on the fifth which is here and number four goes on the seventh output that's the first group and on the second group I'm changing it so that I'm not always using uh, odd or even but I'm basically mixing it so it goes here on the second one of this uh, third group here um, then it goes on the fourth then next goes on the sixth and the last one goes on the last so by doing so, I'm connecting my servos to um, output 0, 2, 4, 6, um, 9, 11, 13, and 15. So this makes sure that I'm not only using odd or even, but when I when there is like a mistake in the software that has to do with even or odd, uh, I uh, it's much easier to figure it out if they are connected this way. So that's a little trick here. For the wiring, first I connect the... Um, DCC input with uh, two jumper wires here that I can use to connect it um, using some crocodile clips uh, to the track but I'm leaving them open right now uh, just make sure they are here then the next thing is the connection between uh, the DCC interface ground here and the uh, input of the DC of the uh, buck converter uh, the uh, negative side here and then um, from the output negative to the bus um, so there is the ground uh, bus here marked in blue so we connect the output negative to the ground bus so that's our ground connection and then the power connection goes from the, the VDD output uh, of the DCC interface module to the um, plus input um, of the buck converter. 
and then uh, an additional wire from the plus output of the buck converter to the uh, 5 volt bus here on the board so like this so if everything is okay we feed DCC we get um, a DC voltage here we feed it around 12 volt or so can be between 12 and 24 defined uh, depending on the scale settings um, of your booster so we define we find uh, we, we feed uh, 12 to probably 20 volts on the input side here it converts it to an output of 5 volts if we set that potentiometer right and that's the next thing we are going to do so those are my crocodile clips that come from the uh, from the layout and all I do is now I connect this here and I should see some uh, lights come on yes we have the power uh, lamp coming on which means DCC is in it's converted into DC it goes into the buck converter and we now have a voltage here that we can measure I'm using my uh, multimeter to measure the voltage and I'm looking for about 7.5 volts the servos should not get more than um, about seven, so eight, eight volts or so um, on the V in. So right now I measure six point six. So maybe I increase that just a little bit. See where we are going. Seven point six. That that's about okay. Um, so we are ready to do the rest of the wiring okay I disconnect the power again and then complete the wiring the next step is uh, to bring power and ground to the Arduino so the ground connection here is the second pin goes to the ground bus and the V in should be minimum of 6 volts, can be up to probably 20. Goes to the power bus, and then the same for the driver board. From ground, we go to the ground bus, then we need. 3.3 um, volts which comes from the Arduino going to VCC and we need V in so the voltage for the uh, servos goes here and comes from our bus here so that we can power um, uh, all the servos and then one more thing I'm going to add a capacitor um, on the power supply of the Arduino so that if there is like any power spike negative or positive uh, coming from the servos uh, that this is filtered out and the Arduino is not running into a power supply problem and finally I have to connect the um, communications so the DCC signal comes from the um, A output of the DCC interface and goes to D2 uh, on the Arduino I could use D2 or D3 as both are interrupt pins the only ones on this uh, small Arduino so I'm choosing D2 and the other thing is the communication uh, of the I square C bus between the Arduino and the, um, the servo board. So I'm connecting SCL for the clock line and SDA for the data line. And the data goes to A4 of the Arduino and the clock line goes to A5 uh, of the Arduino that's a dedicated I2C port 
port of the Arduino Nano, so I really cannot use something else. It is A4 and A5 and that's it. So that's it. Let's power it on again. And everything looks good. So we are ready to start developing the software. Once the Arduino is connected, we load the Arduino IDE and we make sure we use as a board the Arduino Nano or whatever processor you are using and also make sure that the serial port is connected. In my case this is a COM port 14. So all looks like ready to go. Now the first step when um, developing software really is thinking about what are we going to do. Um, and for this little project it's actually not that complicated. Um, we do not even know at this point in time if this hardware is working. We do not know whether DCC commands are coming in, whether we can control the servers or whatsoever. So here is my plan. First I am going uh, to verify that I can receive the DCC signal which comes in over the crocodile clips and then this wire here on D2 on the Nano. If I have that working I should see if I issue a switch command I should see that on screen. Then in the next step I'm going to verify that I can control my servers here and make them move. And once I have both sides of the hardware working then I build the bridge between the DCC and the servo so that actually I can now control the servos. So that's my third step. And once I have that, then I start just improving and adding some new, new functionality uh, to make it a useful decoder. So that's the plan. Let's get started. So first let's verify that we can receive commands from the DCC system. Luckily here, the, all the work has already been done by some people who developed an Arduino library for decoding DCC signals. So all we need to do is make sure we have that library loaded. And for that you go to Include Library, Manage Library. And once this window comes up, you type in here NMRADCC. That's the name of the library. And you see I have it already installed here. If you have not installed here, it would show it to you and you, you would get an install button and you could install it on your computer. Now, once you have it installed, you can go to the example section here and scroll down and somewhere you will find an entry called NMRADCC. A little more. Here we go. And there are several examples here and the one we would like to look into is NMRA DCC Accessory Decoder 1. So we click on that, load it, make it full screen here and let's quickly go through it. Um, most of the stuff is really set the right way. Uh, the first thing we want to look at is this DCC ACK pin. Uh, this is an ACT um, Acknowledge pin that we can use to send uh, an acknowledge to the uh, service track. We are not using that, so we just need to make sure here that nothing is connected uh, to that pin. So pin 3 here is available anyway, so no problem. And then the other thing we need to verify is the initialization. So if we scroll down to setup you see here uh, the initialization on this line here, dcc.pin, 0 is the interrupt number, that's ok. And then the 2 here is the data pin or interrupt pin we are using for decoding um, the DCC signals. That can be on 2 or 3, as you remember we connected it uh, to pin D2, so 2 is actually fine. And then the other thing, the last parameter here, the 1, needs to be 1 because that tells the system to activate the pull-up resistor. Um, as you remember, the DCC interface is open collector, so that means it needs to have a pull-up resistor. Now this is built in, in 
in the um, in the nano so we simply can activate it and that's basically all so all we need to do is compile that library download it and then we can open uh, our serial monitor and just wait till it's compiled now compilation is done and it's downloading it we can see here it says uploading so it's uploading done uploading and now we see in the serial monitor it's initializing and it starts receiving some commands so now if I issue a switch command let's say switch number three to close I get the turnout uh, notification if I do the same for throne I get it with a zero I can change my switch to let's say 17 and send a close command here we go a thrown command here we go so that part is working and don't worry about the um, uh, other uh, commands the 808 806 those are signal commands um, that come along and are sent by my other computer actually that is programmed to just periodically send out those signals as I'm testing my signaling system from uh, video number 9 uh, I just let that run and issue uh, signal commands every 15 seconds or so uh, as part of the test but it's nice to see that those uh, actually get decoded here as well so success now the next step is verifying that we can control the servos here luckily for that also there is a library this time from Adafruit so what we do is we include library open the um, Manage library section and we key in Adafruit PWM and that gives you that library here which is already installed on my computer if you don't have it uh, installed just install it now and then we are ready to go and no surprise once that library is loaded there is also an example in the example section so we scroll down to Adafruit PWM servo driver library and we load the program named servo we go big screen and that servo program actually has everything already ready to go the only thing we need to change is the baud rate here for the serial communication if we use something else I'm normally using 115 200 um, and what it does it it uh, does a, a test with the first eight servos so since we have eight servos but on the addresses up to 15 I want to make this test run from 0 to 15 and not just from 0 to 7 so I change that here um, in the loop where it says here if server num uh, greater than 7 I make this like a 15 and that means it should actually run through the entire um, spectrum so we compile and download and we can open the uh, monitor again so that we see what's going on it's done compiling now it's uploading to the uh, nano it's done uploading and now it should start moving and we see the first one second which is the third really the fifth seventh now it's a little bit a longer break here then comes number nine eleven 13, 15 and then immediately following the number 0 again so it now just cycles through so that means um, our servers are working so now we can receive commands from DCC we can control the servers now it's time to bridge these things together so what we do we create a new program file click new here that generates a new sketch on the sketch we have a setup part and the loop part the setup part is executed once the sketch gets started and then the loop is the continuing thing that the program does so that's just how Arduino programs are structured so and now we can go ahead and copy as much as we can from the previous program so of course we now go over to the um, 
uh, accessory decoder program and see what we need to copy over. First we need to have the include file here so that we load the library. We need to define the um, DCC input, so let's copy that over. And it goes right into the, the beginning. Then let's see a little bit further down. We don't need that. We don't need that. No, no, no. No, we need that constant here for the acknowledge pin just so that we have something to initialize. Again, we are not using the pin really, but it should be in the program. Then those are functions we don't need, but then we want to use the excessive turnout output function and also the signal uh, output function. Those are functions that are kind of like overlaid to the library so when they are here they are called back from the library uh, to let us know that the a command has been received and it's actually printing out the uh, the address and the direction um, uh, on the screen so we copy that over into our new program here and it goes right in front of the setup function then we look into uh, the setup. Here we need the initialization of the serial port, the pin mode command, we can leave that text in, and we need the pin initialization uh, and the init function, and we can also take that text over here. So we copy that in our setup function now. So what it does, it initializes the serial port, then it initializes the acknowledge pin, it sends, sets, uh, prints a text um, on the, on the uh, viewer, initializes the DCC library in two steps here and says that it's done. And then there is one more thing uh, we need to copy over and that is this one here and it's, it, it says here uh, you must call the enumerate DCC process method frequently from the Arduino loop. So we put it just in the loop that it gets called. What it does really is processing the whole thing and make sure that that library is actually ticking. So that would be um, the receiving section. So if everything goes right, we would now with that program be able to receive DCC commands for turnouts and for signals and if we receive something it would show up on screen. So let's test that. We first need to save it somewhere and we need to give it a name. So I call it DCC Servo. We click save. We compile it. We download it or upload it. I open the serial monitor so that we see what's going on. It's done. It's uploading now. It's initializing. It's done with initialization. So we can send our command for switch 17, which is still here. And we see it's decoding it. And we see it was also decoding um, a signal. So that part uh, is working. Now the next step is to actually take those decoded commands and, and put it to the servo and make the servo work. And for that let's just assume we want to have uh, 16 serv uh, servos in, in consecutive addresses starting with like address 21 for the first one. So what I do is uh, I define uh, an integer here, first servo equals 21 and I define uh, num servos equals 16 since we have like 16 servos and now I can go into my DCC turnout function here and I can say if um, adder greater or equal then first servo 
and add a smaller or equal first servo plus non servos a typo there non servos if that's the case then we send a command to um, our board. Now what do we send? For that we can go back to um, our server library and again we need to copy some stuff over. First what we need are the include files uh, those two and the definition of the server driver so we copy this and put it in our own library here and it goes um, right here to the top somewhere so this defines the uh, communication library so the i square c bus uh, and it defines the server driver let's check if we need to do some initialization so we go to the setup we already have that uh, yes we need to do a pwm begin and we need to set the uh, frequency um, those servos are typically updated 60 times per second so that's what we need to put in our um, in our setup function here and then the actual setting we are looking for we can find a little bit later in the loop which really is this here what it does is it sets the, the PWM output of a particular servo number which is something between 0 or from 0 to 15 it sets it to a particular value so for the moment we just copy that command um, into our function uh, somewhere right here we still have to make some adjustments there um, and the other thing we need is the minimum and the maximum position uh, of the servo. So that's those two lines here. And uh, let me quickly explain how this works while I'm copying it over. To control the servo, we need to send it a pulse about 60 times per second. And the length of the pulse determines the servo angle. On most servos, the minimum angle requires a pulse length of 0.5 milliseconds. When the pulse gets longer, the servo starts turning to the right. The angle is proportional to the pulse length and the maximum angle is reached when the pulse is about 2.5 milliseconds. 60 updates per second gives about 16.6 milliseconds for each repetition. The PWM driver is 16 bits, so it breaks these 16.6 milliseconds down to 4096 steps. One step therefore equals about 004 milliseconds. A 0.5 millisecond pulse equals therefore a PWM value of about 123, which leads to the minimum value of 150 to prevent the servo from running into the mechanical stop. The same goes for the upper end, here the maximum value is set to 600. Okay, so these two lines go right here. So we define servo min and servo max. And now we just can start setting uh, the position. So we say if uh, direction equals zero, let's assume that's like straight, we set PWM, uh, I come back to the server number, we set this to the server min. And the server number would be something between 0 and 15, so it would be adder minus our first servo. So let's say the address comes in um, 21, and our first servo is 21 this calculation would be a zero which means it would write the command to the um, port zero which is the first one so that's correct now if direction is something else um, then zero 
we would write servo max instead, so that would bring the servo to the outer position. So I think that should do the trick. Let's uh, give it a test. So it's compiling and there is an error. What is it? Uh, obviously somewhere. Oh yeah, there is like a end bracket missing here. Okay. Let's try again. Okay, compilation is successful. Now it's uploading. I'm going to switch to the monitor so that we see when it's initializing. Okay, so I should now be able to command um, servo 21. Let's test that and see what happens. Great, then 22 is missing, but 23 we should have. Yes, that's the second one here. The next is 25. Yes and so on. So we have a successfully working servo decoder with 16 channels and that was just what 10 minutes? So it's not too complicated. So after a little more than half an hour working on it we have a functioning decoder. It is not great and it lacks a lot of features that are on the requirements list but it's working. And yes when I built it the first time, it took me about two hours to come to this point, but that's also not too bad. To me, this project shows what is now possible thanks to a lot of small breakout boards and electronics components that became available over the last few years. It used to be that the development of a decoder like this was a major project, but now it can be conveniently done in an evening. And with a moderate level of knowledge and some YouTube how-to videos like this, we all can become builders and make our own model railroad control devices and that's right at the core of the IOTT channel. As always, I hope the information in this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If so, please click the like button below and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your support as well as any feedback in the comment section below. Also, check out the additional information provided in the description section. If you don't want to miss the second part of this decoder build, click the bell icon and you will get a notification when the video comes out. Thanks for watching and see you next time!